All right, uh, let's get into the workshop to, for today. Um, this is scanning my favorite chart list. And the first thing I do um, when I'm thinking about scanning, I, I, well, I'm always thinking about scanning my chart list because I trade almost exclusively. And I would say, I can't even remember the last time I placed a trade now outside of my chart list, but usually it doesn't result in very good, um, in very good trades. So I tend to stick with what works best for me. Uh, being a CPA, uh, I really believe that fundamentals play a big part in this as well. I think that management needs to be trusted. And so I like companies that beat uh, Wall Street estimates as to both revenues and earnings per share. Um, it's, just a, it's just confirmation of a company executing its plan. And so I think that that gives you a little bit more confidence. At least it gives me a little bit more confidence in the trade, knowing that I've got a company that's executing fundamentally and then also I like the charts or I wouldn't put it in the chart list. So that's how, that's kind of the basics. When I say my, my strong earnings chart list or I like to run scans against my favorite chart list, that's it, the strong earnings chart list. Right now I have 329 stocks on that list. It continually updates, especially as we get into earnings season, as you can imagine. A lot of new reports coming out, uh, companies that were uh, fan favorites last quarter, sometimes can't catch a bid in the next quarter. Um, if they can't meet their estimates or if they can't beat their estimates or if they lower guidance, or maybe it's just their industry group that's falling apart. Uh, there's a whole host of reasons. I don't trade, for the most part, I don't trade energy companies, material companies, because those two areas have been underperforming the market for so long. But when I think about the scan, I want to run um, every day. And there are a couple I run every day. But I, I, I'm going to use an analogy, um, a football coach. You know, if you're in the NFL and you're, you got a, a third and 20 play, um, you're not going to pick the same play on third and 20 that you would on third and one. Third and one gives you lots of different options. Third and 20, if you really want to pick up that first down, you're going to go back and you're going to heave it. You got to throw something down the field. Well, the stock market's kind of similar. I mean, if you've got a market that has been down for six, seven days in a row. Maybe it's in an uptrend overall, but it's been pulling back. Probably is not a whole lot of point in running a 52-week high um, scan against a chart list because if the overall market's been coming down for seven or eight straight days, probably you're not getting too many companies that are making breakouts. Instead, I would be thinking about some kind of a pullback scan that I, that I have. So maybe uh, wanting to scan the RSI being back in a certain range, 40 to 50, 40 to 45, something like that. Because many times in uptrends, when you do get pullbacks, uh, some of the leading stocks, if you can get them with their RSIs back in that 40 to 45, maybe even up to 50 area, a lot of times that marks bottoms. Um, if, you, if you've ever studied long-term uptrends, and I know uh, Dave Keller's talked about this, I know Arthur Hill's talked about it, these are trend-following um, indicators. They're momentum oscillators. The RSI is a momentum oscillator. But, and, and everyone talks about 30 being oversold, 70 being overbought. But when you're in an uptrend, you rarely go back to 30. A lot of times when you get those pullbacks, you only go back to about 40. So the first thing you have to do when you think about scanning is think about the, the type of scan you want to run. Now, we're fairly close to all-time highs. I think the 52-week high scan is fine. So I keep... Uh, a couple of scans uh, that I've saved. And so I could go ahead and pull one up here. Let's go ahead and start with this, this SECL 52-week high scan that I've saved. Strong earnings chart list, SECL 52-week highs. So all I have to do is pull that up and I'll edit it just so you can see what it is. But essentially, it is checking to see whether or not the daily high exceeded yesterday's daily max for over the last 253 days, and then my favorites list, which is my strong earnings chart list. I mean, it's got these other volume uh, things in here. I could probably take that out. I don't really need that, but it's not going to hurt because I know that that 40,000 volume is not going to be a problem with the, the stocks that I have in my list. So um, I'm just going to run the scan. And when I run the scan, it's showing me that there were nine stocks of my 329 stocks on the list. Nine of them are setting 52-week highs. So I can sort them. Now, if they're, sort of, if they're setting 52-week high, chances are the scooter is going to be pretty strong. And you can see the scooter, the lowest one is 78. 
The other thing I like to do sometimes is look at the industry and see where is the breakout occurring. Transportation services, semiconductors, love the semiconductors. Home construction. Home construction has been in an uptrend for quite some time. So if I'm getting a breakout there, I want to know about it. I want to know which stock it is. I want to know if it's a, you know, a, a breakout that's tradable, or maybe we're just so overbought, it's not, you know, maybe it's been making 52-week highs for a while. Life insurance, that's come to life a little bit, uh, no pun intended, um, of late with the 10-year treasury yield moving to the upside. But it's kind of interesting with the yields moving down the last couple of days that this life insurance company is setting a new 52-week high. Maybe it's a topping kind of a candle. It could have doesn't mean that we're at 52-week highs right now. It just means that we hit a 52-week high at some point during the day. So it could be a reversal. Um, Meritage Homes, home construction again. Lockheed Martin, love these defense stocks. Uh, electronic equipment, media agencies. And there's a restaurant and bar with only a 78 scooter. That kind of makes me wonder too. If, if the scooter is only 78, that kind of tells me maybe the stock hasn't been, isn't overbought. Um, is it? I don't know. Let's pull up a chart and see. Uh, a lot of sideways consolidation. Big move up. I see a cup. I see a handle. Now, we have a false breakout. I would not be jumping in right at this level, 89.79. But later in the day, if the volume, you see the volume really start to pick up. I don't like that light volume today either. We're already, we're getting close to the halfway point of the day and only 124,000 shares on a false breakout. It tells me maybe we're, this is not going to, not going to do it. If it's going to do it and I'm, and I'm going to trade it, I need to see more volume coming in. And I want to see that definitive breakout above 90 on the close. The measurement from 90 down to the bottom of the cup, around 84, that would be a target of 96. So looking at a stock like this, I would say, okay, if I'm buying it on the breakout, let's say I get in at 90 and a half, 91, I would probably only buy half of it um, because I'm not a big fan of these breakouts. Sometimes, like I said, they're false breakouts. Maybe we get one more test of the 20-day moving average. But if we get the breakout and the volume is heavy, I think even if the breakout doesn't hold, it's probably going to hold when it gets down to the 20-day moving average. So buying half on a breakout allows me the opportunity to maybe buy the other half down around 87 if it gets there. My target would then be my measurement, 96. So if I got in at 91 and I get in at 87, that would be an average of 89. I could probably have about a $2 risk to the downside, $7 to the upside, to 96 from an average entry of 89. That would be three and a half to one reward to risk. I'll take those just about every day. But again, jack in the box. The reason that this even comes up is number one, I know they beat their um, revenue and earnings estimates. That was the gap up here back in August. That was the huge rally on heavy volume. So I don't like chasing. Stock went up for the next few days. You can see it pulled all the way back down. 20-day test is usually a good ent entry opportunity. And I would say the gap up right here to 83 would be another uh, possible entry. Never quite got back down there. But from even the 20-day moving average, you can see you got about $6 out of it, put in the right side of that cup, and now we're just consolidating. But Jack in the Box is one that I think looks pretty interesting based on the... Um, the scan and having picked up the stock, just taking a look at it. All right, others, I want to pull up KLA. KLA uh, is one of the stocks in my uh, portfolios over at Earnings Beats. I think KLA is a, one of the strongest um, semiconductor stocks right now. I'm not sure I like this false breakout. It was up over, and I want to say that the intraday high is probably, uh, because it's on the list, had to have cleared that. That was 155.33. Today, we got to 155.78. So remember, I was saying on these 52-week highs, you can get these false breakouts, intraday moves, and then false breakouts where we pull back. KLA, depending on how we close. Now, if we can close strong, get back up over 155 on the close, I'm going to be very bullish. Even if we don't, I'm still going to be bullish. I'm just not going to be as bullish in the near term. Um, anytime I get a false breakout, look at what, uh, look what happened here. KLA gets this big move up, just like we saw recently, pulls back, well, pulls back here for four or five days. Look at this move up. Looked like it was making a breakout, big volume, and look at how it finished, and look what happened the next two days. So the sellers came in once they saw the failure. Uh, buyers, all the buying kind of dried up. Sellers took control, and we sideways consolidated and then made a breakout. So if we fail and we have something similar to this, 
then I would think maybe in the short term, especially if the Fed comes out and disappoints, we could be seeing a short term top on KLA Corp. But I would suspect any kind of a move back into the mid 140s would be a great entry opportunity for the stock. All right, so those were two. Um, Copart, let's pull up Copart because I think this one was also, uh, it's very, very high on the scooter. Look at the volume here and look at the, that was earnings related. It was trading down initially after earnings. And, but by the end of the day, look at that huge reversal from 73 and change up to over 80 on one of the strongest volume days of the year. Barely has pulled back and now we're upsetting a new high again. Mac, or excuse me, the uh, PPO looks great here. I think after having a negative divergence that you can see here, higher prices, lower PPO, I think we went back reset and I think we're starting a new move to the upside and on great volume. The stock looks good. Now, would I trade it here? Probably not because it's a little extended. What I always think about is, okay, where am I going to get out? If I get in at this price, 83 and a quarter, where would I get out? And my answer would probably be a move below the 20-day moving average of close. Well, that's down to 79. I'd have to give up 5%. So the only reason that I would consider giving up 5% to the downside is if there was something telling me that I was going to make at least 10% to the upside. And I don't really have anything in play here that's telling me pattern-wise that I'm going to be up to 90, you know, $93 um, anytime soon. Might happen. Uh, chart looks good. But again, I would rather wait and see. I've got 329 stocks on my list. I don't have to jump in on every one that comes up on a scan. Um, so I can still be very selective. I think, again, the chart looks great, but I think this is an, an opportunity maybe just to look for something that, that uh, potentially could be a little bit better. Okay, uh, last one I'm going to look at off of this list is Pulte, PHM, home construction, um, straight up. Um, you know, it's been a great performer. Let's look at the relative chart. If I pull that up, you can see relative to home construction, it went through a period of some profit taking. It had a big drop back in uh, the third week of July. That was earnings related, but it held its price support. Remember, I was showing you a chart earlier, big drop, heavy volume, but it held support and then continued. Now you can see here on Palti, it continues going higher. So it's the combination of price and volume that gets me. It's not just the fact we're down on big volume. Did we lose major support? And I would say in this case, no, we didn't. We held it, and then we rallied back to the upside, set new highs, and I think Pulte continues to look pretty good on the chart. All right, um, let's move on to another scan. So let's go back, and I'm going to pull up... <clears throat> Let's take a look. So I, I just did the 52-week high, but the market's really not soaring here. Um, we've pulled back a little bit the last couple of days. Wonder if there's any, um, any, any of the stocks on this list maybe that have pulled back with an RSI. I actually think the scan is 40 to 45, but let's edit, edit it and check it out. Yeah, it's the, my, the RSI has to be greater than 40 and it, and it has to be lower than 45. So I probably started it at some point, did 50, and then changed it. Um, 40 to 45, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this scan. Again, it's against my strong earnings chart list. So it's just telling me all these companies that have beaten top and bottom lines. I like the charts. Here's a list of the ones that have an RSI between 40 and 45. 33 of them. So 33 out of 329. So roughly 10%. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just replace an existing chart list and I'll go through scan results. I have a scan results RSI 40 to 50 already set up. And then I could just go through 10 uh, per page if I wanted to. So you've got uh, APPN coming down to a really key area of support. You can see the big volume gap up around 45. It's getting a 50 day test. Avalara, this is one that I really liked uh, Monday setup, I think actually from last week. It did not hold. The 75 level, which is where I wanted it to hold. So I would have been stopped out if I had traded that one. Um, just going through real quick to see if there's anything that looks good. Oh, here's 50. I mean, if we got a hammer or something on this one, CLGX, let's see uh, the stock relative to its peers. Um, business services. 
Yeah, it's not, it was showing some relative strength and has now pulled back. I mean, if it put the hammer in right on the 50-day moving average, that would probably be right on this trend line. It's one that I would certainly keep on my radar. Um, and again, we go back up and close above about 46 and a quarter, 46 and a half, something like that today. Then I could get in, put today's low in as a stop, an intraday stop, and only be risking maybe one and a half percent. Um, and to the upside, I'd be looking maybe for a three dollar reversal, which would maybe be about seven percent. So seven percent upside versus one and a half percent downside, four to one, almost five to one. Again, uh, that's going to get my attention. All right, uh, let's take a look here. Oh, that was the. Um, Uh, well, let's see. These are the ones that were on this scan, and you can see. Um, and, and if ever you don't see the column you want, by the way, like I'm looking for scooter, don't see it. Sometimes you just go up here and you have to click on that. Also, um, industry group I like, and scooter and market cap. I can put them all on here. All right. So now I can take a look and look at uh, Enphase Energy up uh, 1.79%. I was just talking about this one, I think, yesterday. Um, the stock, I actually liked it coming down here, finally filling that gap support. I think it was Snap that I was showing you earlier. Let me pull that chart up again, just so I can, as a reminder. See how we gapped up? This took a month and a half, two months really, uh, to come all the way back down and test this gap support, printed a hammer, and now look at it beginning to strengthen. Now let's go back and look at Enphase. Talked about the fact that renewable energy was having such a big day. Well, this was one of the leaders. Now, I'm not saying it's going to soar back up again. I think getting back up through those two moving averages are going to be critical because we came down on heavy volume. Some of that's probably just the pain inflicted. Anybody buying the stock back up in the mid-30s, probably not very happy two or three weeks later when it's down around 21, 22. So you're going to get a lot of panic on the way down. But it did hold gap support with its earnings. That was a huge earnings announcement and it's starting to recover again. Right now, for me, this stock I would be watching very closely. Uh, 2165, I believe, is that gap support. Let me see if that's the right number. 2165. So 2165, I'd watch to the downside and look at both of these moving averages. They are a nickel apart, 2640 and 2645. That's the trading range for me right now on end phase. All right, let's see any others that maybe are in here that uh, might catch my attention. Uh, also looking at some of the uh, industry groups here. All right, HEI. And remember, all these stocks are stocks that just hit, their, uh, hit that RSI 40 to 45. All right, so let's pull up HEI. And you can see now RSI has actually gone down. It went down into oversold territories, come back up. That's a little different. That's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stocks that have been overbought and are coming down into the 40s. So this one's gotten beaten up on some very heavy volume. I'd be actually pretty careful from about 132 up to 135 on HEI. Um, and I would want to make sure I get through that 135 level, get through that 20 week, or excuse me, 20 day moving average. Something to uh, to be watching for there. And then maybe do one more and then I'll show you one other scan that I run. Um, I mentioned, I, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but Waste and Disposal Services has been a group that's been leading in 2019, but it has been rough the last couple of weeks. Well, Waste Management is on the list and moving higher. Let's see what's going on here. Here we are down just a little bit below 40 and turning back up again. I, even though Waste Management's been getting hit on some heavier volume, I'm going to annotate. There's one thing I do like about um, waste management. And that is the breakout that we saw on huge volume back here in late May, early June. We've never gone back and tested that. We got close. So if I was looking at this recent low, we went below that. The volume was pretty big, but we haven't gone back and filled or not filled, but gone back and tested a prior breakout level. So I would be thinking that somewhere down in this range, I wouldn't be surprised to see waste management begin to get uh, some love. Um, at the top, you can see that bearish engulfing candle. Anytime you're on an uptrend, you see that, at least in the short term, you should be thinking probably going to be uh, moving lower, especially when you've got an uptrend that was you know six, seven days long. 
All right, so that's another scan. Let's go back and um, take a look at one more scan. And this scan is, this scan is gonna be a high volume, intraday high volume scan that I like to run. And so let's edit this one, just take a look at what's going on here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the daily volume today for all the stocks in my strong earnings chart list. Again, that's a global filter down here. Strong earnings chart list, that's the only thing that the scan engine is running against, my strong earnings uh, chart list. So the daily volume for today is greater than the 90-day simple moving average of volume times 0.4. So let's say that a stock normally over the last 90 days has averaged doing a million shares a day. Well, I usually run this one at 10 a.m. So at 10 a.m., if I've got a stock that's already done 40% of that or 400,000 shares, that is on a pace to go way beyond the million for the day. And so early in the trading day, maybe there's no news. Maybe it's just a stock that's doing something technically that I want to be aware of. Well, one way to find out is to see unusual volume. And it could be the either way. It could be the upside or it could be the downside. So let's take a look at this now. It's 0.4. We're halfway through the day. If I run this, well, let's just run it so you can see. But I'm going to get about, you know, probably 150 stocks on this list. 109. All right. That's too many. That's not really what I'm trying to do here. So let's go back over here and let's change this. And what if a stock is already done 1.2? I mean, here we are at the halfway point of the day. Let's say it's already gone. It's 120% of normal volume already today. So we're going to update our criteria. We're going to run the scan. And there's four of them on the list. Now, I could go back and change it, maybe go to one times. Maybe I'd get eight or nine of them. We already looked at, uh, actually, we didn't look at DR Horton. I actually put that in a, um, a daily market report for Earnings Beats members. And I'll show that to you in just a minute, too. Um, if you like the scans and you like these results that I'm coming up with, I want to show you something. OK, so DH Horton or excuse me, DR Horton, DHI, coming down. This has been a key area of support on the stock right around the 20-day moving average, also right around this price support area, 48.5 to 49. Today's low was 49.04. I think that's in a great group. If we pull up the uh, relative chart, you will see that the stock overall has, the group's been trending higher versus the S&P. The stock's been trending higher versus both the S&P and versus the home construction group's been consolidating here in September. A lot of times that's just an opportunity. The group's been moving up, but after the huge advance DR Horton had, you can see the outperformance. It outperformed its home construction peers. It simply went sideways here for a little while. And while it was consolidating, it was losing relative strength. Well, stock can't go up all the time. It's going to you know, pull back from time to time. But I think DR Horton could be poised for another big push to the upside as it has been one of the stronger home construction stocks over the past few months. Um, now, let me, I wanna show you where you can go for the next couple of days because I am posting um, the daily market report that I'm doing. If you go into the about us right now, it's just in this section. I uh, just wanted to post a daily market report sample. So here is the sample of what I, uh, sent out to Earnings Beats members today. And if you ever, if you followed my Trading Places blog um, and you saw all of the uh, market analysis that I did and a lot of the individual charts that I would post in there, the Monday setups, uh, all of those different things, you want to um, just keep in mind that over at uh, Earnings Beats, that's what I'm posting really on steroids. Um, if, as you go through this, here's the market overview, talking about what's been going on with crude oil, um, the 10 year treasury yield moving up. I do a sector industry focus here. This was home construction I talked about today. And I mentioned Meritage, which was one of the um, home construction stocks that I like. And you can see the, the relative strength there and the way the stock's been trading. Um, strong earnings chart list. This is what I was showing. Scan, the scans I'm showing you right now, I put in the, the uh, daily market report every day. So here was high volume stocks. I actually sent this out. You can see I ran the scan at 1020. 
already doing 40% of the normal volume as of 10, 15, and there's six stocks came back. Uh, DR Horton was one of them. And you can see the stocks that are really making noise in terms of volume. Uh, here was the DR Horton chart, just what I was just showing you. I posted here in this blog. Here's Funko making a big uh, move to the upside, but Funko um, pulling back after announcing a secondary offering. Uh, that is one of the least favorite uh, phrases I, I hear as a short-term trader on the long side. I do not like secondary offerings because they generally mean dilution and immediate drops in the, in the stock if you're holding it. Uh, let's see. Then I've got current alerts. So the, those are just alerts that we have out to members. Um, today's mover. So this is not on the strong earnings chart list. I don't trade off of the strong earnings chart list, but I know a number of our members do. And energy was kind of in the spotlight yesterday. And so I just was wanted to point out that Schlumberger had been having a huge move the last two or three weeks and was, you know, energy was getting a lot of write up, but we can't lose focus on the big chart, the big picture. And here you can see Schlumberger pulling back. So anyhow, just wanted to point that out. You can go back in and take a look at that. If you go to earningsbeats.com, click on about us and go down to the daily market report sample. I'm going to be posting these the rest of this week. So this is the first week that I'm doing these over at Earnings Beats. I just want uh, folks that have followed me at Stock Charts to also have an opportunity to see exactly what it is that I, I do over there in terms of these uh, market reports. All right, last thing I want to do before we pull up the summary is I just want to go back and show you very quickly how you can go to the um, predefined scans. If I can get back to it, there we go. All right, so on the predefined scan down here, if you click on that, you can pull up any of these um, scans, these predefined scans. Um, and so let's say, I'm looking for something's got a bunch of them. All right, bearish and golfing. So 145 bearish and golfing. I could pull that up and I could then click here to edit the scan and I could go down below and add my chart list. So here, let me go in here and put that strong earnings chart list in here. And it'll tell me if any of my stocks are showing a bearish and golfing candle. So I add that. And you can see there it is, it's been added. I'll just check syntax, make sure we're good, we're good. And I run the scan. And none. So right now I don't have any of them showing a bearish and golfing candle, but hopefully you can get the point. Use a predefined scan, click on the uh, details of that scan, and then just add your chart list against. It's very easy to set up these scans, even if you don't understand how to set up scans. All right, uh, that is it for the chart list. Uh, you can see it on the screen right there in front of you. Some of the things that I do, um, and uh, we looked at a bunch of individual stocks. So I hope you enjoyed that workshop.